All right, so we got one last video here for this portion of the brain, and that's dealing with the dural septa and the sinuses. Now, uh, a septa is actually plural. Um, it's plural for septum. The word septum means wall, so septa means uh, more than one wall. Uh, and also the sinuses are referring to these blue things that you see in here. These are referring to blood vessels. They're actually veins. So we'll get to that in just a moment. But let's talk about the walls for just a second. Um, this model or this picture doesn't make any sense to you if you just see it from this side until you realize that the top of this thing is uh, actually cranial bone. So you can see the two parietal bones and the sagittal suture here. But when you turn it back to the side, what they're telling you is they're telling you that this pink stuff that you see, this, this, uh, this pinkish tan stuff that you see is actually a membrane that is a membranous wall that separates one hemisphere from the other. And I took the liberty of taking one of our disarticulated brains and putting it inside this model so you can see how the cerebrum fits here. And so this would be the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere would fit right inside there. Uh, you can see the corpus callosum in here as well. The corpus callosum uh, would still be able to connect with the left hemisphere of the cerebrum. It just so happens that in this case, uh, the rest of the brain is separated from one another. You even have a part of the septum here that separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. The cerebellum would actually sit right here in this spot, and so this would be in that transverse fissure that would divide the cerebellum from the cerebrum. If we look closely, uh, we'll find that this entire membrane all of this uh, tan peach here, all of that membrane is known as the phallic cerebri, cerebri, cerebrum. So the phallic cerebri is this entire wall. It's not the blue, it's the wall that we see here. Um, also, not to mention the phallic, not, the, not to forget the uh, tentorium cerebelli. If you looked at this from a posterior view, you see how the tentorum cerebella looks like a tent. And this portion here, if we flip it over, this is the tentorum cerebelli, where the cerebrum is above and the cerebellum is below. Henceforth, the name cerebelli, the cerebellum would be there. We also have the sinuses, which are veins. These veins are draining blood from the brain and taking it back to the heart. The brain uh, uses an enormous amount of oxygenated blood, about 20% of all the oxygenated blood that gets pumped out of the left side of your heart actually goes to your brain for him to use for oxygen because 97% of all the neural tissue in your body is made up in your brain, so it's, it's using a lot of oxygen. Uh, so we have several different sinuses. We have the superior sagittal sinus. Then just below it, you have the smaller inferior sagittal sinus. And if you look closely, you'll see where the inferior sagittal sinus joins in with another vein, which this vein right here that just kind of pops up out of nowhere, right there. That vein is the great cerebral vein. Now, people miss this on lab tests a lot because they don't realize that the great cerebral vein is draining blood right here from the middle of your brain. So blood's coming from the middle of your brain and going straight into the great cerebral vein, and then the great cerebral vein and this inferior sagittal sinus merge together, and then they become an entirely new vein, which is known as the straight sinus. Then the straight sinus and the superior sagittal sinus both merge here. And when they merge here, they merge at this point known as the confluence of sinuses. A confluence is referring to a place where things join, where things meet. 
So here's the straight sinus. There's the superior sagittal sinus. Both of them dump right here and they become the confluence of sinuses. And then the confluence of sinuses splits into two different directions. One goes left, the other one goes right, and they become what's known as the lateral sinuses. You have a left one and then you have a right one. And ultimately that blood makes it back to the heart so that it can then go to the lungs and become oxygenated once again.